everyone welcome to another edition of babes with books we are minus one of our bffs tonight maya is off gallivanting the countryside having some fun so hi maya when you tune in to us thanks for joining us everyone and we're really excited to be bringing you this story all all the light we cannot see by oh i always forget his name anthony door door yeah. yeah so Leslie, what did you think of this book? Well, why don't you tell, oh. start by telling us oh, a little okay, bit about fine. the book. I, was, I forget this. Okay. <laughs> so this book is set in during World War II. It is one of those books that is told from different people's perspectives. So there's different characters, and it builds up on each of them. It actually jumps around in time as well. And I'm going to comment about that um, when we start talking about it. And the, one of the main characters is a little girl, and she, Marie Claire. Was, yeah, yeah, Marie Claire, and she is blind actually. And her father makes her a complete replica of the towns that she is living in during the time, and so that she can figure out how to get around, how many steps, and and actually she memorizes the model of the town. So it's really quite cool how I loved that part. Yeah, how he helps her with that. And there's also a mystery diamond in there, or, well, I think it's a gem of some sort. I don't think it's a diamond, but, um, so there's, a, that keeps popping into the story. There's also, um, the other main character is Werner. He is a German soldier who was an orphan, actually, and was trained and goes through kind of a rough time in his life. And kind of uh, we get to see inside his head a little bit and what he's going through. He's a whiz when it comes to radios and electronics and stuff. Mm -hmm. He's a natural. So anyway, that's the gist of the story. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to the other question you asked. Mm -hmm. How did I like the book? How did so, you like it? Um, I thought that this book was very well written. Of course, it's won a uh, Pulitzer Prize. Um, I don't generally read historical fiction on a regular basis. Um, I'd rather read new stories, so to speak. Um, but I, I thought this was really an interesting insight because it was from the perspective of two young uh, people that went through the war, um, both on different sides of the, the battlefield, so to speak. Werner is um, an orphan and he basically is brought up um, he loves radios and he loves all these things and the war breaks out and um, it's kind of taboo for them to have this these things and someone kind of uh, one of the, the German generals uh, kind of sees Werner and says hey he has some potential and he is basically enlisted and brought into this um, I'd like that it highlights the um, rigors of, I guess, training children to be soldiers. Um, so that was kind of an interesting part of the story. And I liked that the, um, the main character, uh, Maury Lure, was blind. I thought that added a really interesting element. I loved the, the house building. So I did want to find out what happened to the characters all the way through. And all in all, I thought it was a really good book. It's not one that I would probably read over and over again, but I'm glad that I read it. And I definitely gave, it gave me some interesting insight, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Some of the different things. I have some questions for you. What about you? <laughs> did you like it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? <laughs> Well, I was really, really excited about this book because it had been recommended to me by so many people. Um, actually, even a, a man raved about this book, and I don't usually hear men raving about books, so that was 
really intrigued me about it. That sounds a little bit like a sexist comment. Uh, Just gonna just say. A <laughs> maybe. Sorry about that, guys. I'm bad sometimes. For all of our male listeners out yeah, there, yeah. feel free to call her on it. Anyway, so sorry. I was really, really excited about this book. I do like historical fiction. I read quite a bit of historical fiction. So I was stoked. As you can see, I'm not actually totally finished this book because I am having a hell of a time, for lack of a better word, getting through it. I really like the descriptions and the, like you, the character, the Marie Lore um, character and the, you know, what she's going through and, and what, what Werner is going through is fascinating and it's very well described and stuff, but the darkness, and I don't know if maybe it's because I'm at, at a certain point in my life right now, I'm not sure, but the darkness and the just the bad things that are happening are in the book are really they're really bothering me so I'm really having a hard time getting through some of it and maybe it's the time of day I've tried reading in the morning it I've tried to read reading it in the morning I've tried reading it at night sometimes so, you just have to be in the right frame of yeah. mind I'm interested to hear what if any of our uh, listeners have read the book and what they thought of it um, I think with heavy this is a heavy book it's not like a pickup on Easter weekend and just you'll you'll trudge through it unlike our next book which is the circle and we'll talk about it a little bit later i love this book anyways back to this one um <laughs> i think be it's also a, a pulitzer prize winner uh which i mentioned before I, I had a question for you actually about that um i i'm kind of what do you think about prize winners do you generally gravitate towards prize winners does it make you like feel that the book has a little bit more merit or when you see a prize winner do you kind of shy away from it because you know it's going to be of a certain level I don't normally read Pulitzer Prize winners but I do like to read like Newbery Honor books or ones that win on Canada Reads mm -hmm. I do like to read some of those ones um, so what why what, why the different ones why not one and the other well I think I don't know. It's it's like you mentioned earlier before we got went on on air that it's part of it's like the Oscars, right? A lot of those movies are just not my thing because they're just too whatever. <laughs> I can't even say artsy, I guess maybe. I don't know. I, uh, they're very deep and emotional. I kind of feel like yeah. if if you want to win a prize as an author, you have to uh, you have to kind of really dig deep into the everyday life or the the maybe not everyday life but the life of humans it has to be a very human story and this was definitely a very human story um i felt the theme was it was set in the war but the theme wasn't the war it was really about two people that kind of you you've heard about their stories and their experiences but then also when they finally do come together um spoilers but when they finally do meet each other and and it's kind of about finding the good in the other person even though they're on completely different sides yeah. and uh, I think that I tend to not gravitate towards prize winners either I, I similar to I know my uh, my sidekick that I have uh, he I told him I was gonna call him a sidekick instead of call her half he could be <laughs> Robin half. I'm Batman <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway sorry I think he like he doesn't tend to if it if it went on Oscar, he actually won't read it or won't watch it because um, it has a certain caliber and he knows that if it's won an Oscar, then the people that vote for Oscars loved it, which means he probably would hate it. <laughs> so I'm just wondering if that's kind of where you are at with, with, with prize winners. Yeah, like even, even critically acclaimed movies, even not even Oscar winners, I tend not to like. Mm -hmm. I just like them to be more more real and more down to earth and more everyday I guess mm -hmm. like you said but yeah I I'm really disappointed that I didn't like this book or I'm not liking this book I will finish it I think but uh, I bought this book because I was so excited about it so and maybe I set myself up mm -hmm. it is really really well written I have to say it's the it's the description beautiful language and yeah beautiful it's, language and it's not hard language, but it's no. it's just really visual, and maybe that's what the problem is. Maybe it feels too real, but I've read other books that are real-ish, so. 
So I'll mention again, for those of you who are joining us maybe for the first time, we are an interactive broadcast. So if you have questions for us or questions about the themes that we bring up, feel free to shoot them off to us right away on, in the comments and we'll try and answer them and get to as many of them as we can. Um, if not, feel free to just listen. Uh, we have some questions of our own as well that we'll try and kind of ask each other and keep the conversation going, but we really want to talk with you. So please ask us or tell us what you think or disagree with us, that would be fine too. Um, so I guess one thing that I was wondering um, when I was reading this book is, um, I was looking at a lot of the discussion guides and how to make it, like if you're, re there's book club discussion guides and things for it. And there were some suggestions on how to make your experience with the book a little bit more um, interactive or deeper. Mm -hmm. um, and so they, they suggested looking into some of the history of the time, looking at maps, trying oh, to find okay. out where the city actually was. So my question for you was, do you do that generally when you when you read a book? Do you immerse yourself in the world that it, that it was or is? Well, definitely when I have read some of the um, King Henry VIII mm. style books, but that's because I'm kind of a freak about royal family stuff. Mm -hmm. So then, yes, I have researched that stuff. I actually, when we read Nicholas and Alexandra in grade 12, I became obsessed with the royal, the Russian, the last Tsar, and, and of course then I'm researching every, well back then it was encyclopedias, people, there was no internet. Um, so I was just going through all of our encyclopedias, finding everything I could about him. Um, so yeah, I do do that quite often, especially with these historical ones. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> what about you? Um, if I really love a book, I usually can't stop talking about it and I really uh, dig myself like into it. I really love it when the author will put something at the back of the book that has research, either links about what they did for research, as well as um, information about where, like even if it's a science fiction, where that idea came from. So for example, Margaret Atwood, I love Margaret Atwood's uh, Matt Adam series, Oryx and Craig, mm -hmm. and there's so much sci-fi in there because it's a, a kind of a post-apocalyptic sort of dystopian novel in the not so distant future. Um, and all of the stuff that she has in her book about this futuristic world is stuff that's already under development. So she has links of here's the information about you know growing chicken breasts from scratch. And I just saw something on YouTube about that actually being done recently. Um, so I love it when an author gives you that information so you don't have to look for it yourself. But um, yeah, so I will if I really like the book. I'll definitely dig deeper into it. Um, Jason is asking a question whether yes. we like uh, do you like it when a book provides maps I love that love it love it love it maps and um, the family tree things mm -hmm. that they put in the front of books often so you can I don't know whose cousin of cousin of who and who's uh, yeah and I think that that's great things like Outlander um, <laughs> the Robert Jordan series Fantasy definitely goes in there. I was just at a, actually a writer's group a couple of months ago and they were talking about map making for fantasy worlds and I think that uh, a map shouldn't be a crutch. So someone should be able to read your book or I should be able to read a book without having to look at the map. But if I feel like digging in deeper and I want to look at a map, then I can. If your story can't stand alone, then um, and someone needs a visual aid to make it. Now, graphic novels and stuff aside, um, but yeah, I, I think that I, I love maps and things like that, definitely, um, but I think it should stand, the story should definitely stand alone. <laughs> Um, and superhero books, if you have some suggestions of superhero <laughs> books, we're happy to do no, that. We, no. we have a lineup. Actually, it's a good question. Someone asked what, when we're doing superhero books. If you go to the Pandora's Books base, er, website, www.pandorasbooks.ca, there is a list of all the upcoming books. We are also looking at doing some local Alberta authors coming up, um, try and support the local community as well. So watch for that. Um, if you have suggestions of things you want us to discuss, by all means, put that in the comments or send us a message. That would be awesome. We have someone else who's saying she, she likes books with maps and glossaries. 
Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Other languages. <laughs> That's kind of fun. So the phrases, common phrases. So there was a, a phrase in the book that really, speaking of phrases, that struck me. Mm -hmm. um, and it was when Werner and his sister, when they're young and they're at the orphanage, they're listening they are, they're listening to a Frenchman on the radio and he always closes his broadcast by saying open your eyes and see what you can with them before they close forever I really really liked that phrase but it's me I'm, anybody that knows me is not surprised that I really like that phrase I'm sure um, because it's all about seizing the moment and to be saying something like that in a time like during the war I mean yeah, like the, the possibility of death is very real. So a lot of people might bury their heads in the sand or pretend things aren't happening and or, um, um, you know, try to live life to the fullest before they die. There's been a few movies that I've seen where the characters, um, what was that Brad Pitt movie, The Tank, Fury, he uh, was telling the young guy to take advantage of of the situation before they could because they could be dead any minute right so they needed he needed to forget his fears and just live before he something happened to them and and i think being in a war situation something like that it, it, it would definitely so make you very do you think like i too really like that i think it's a very poignant do you think it's as poignant and as relevant today as it would have been back then. Like, open your eyes and really see before they shut forever, to sum that up. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think we've lost kind of a connection to something like that? Or is it is it just me? Or um, is it that we live in North America and we're too privileged and we don't have to worry about that? Obviously, there's terrible <laughs> civil wars going on in Syria right now and all over the world and countries that are all interconnected and you know even terrible things going on in our own country um, is is that phrase just as poignant today definitely because I think we are yes we are taking things for granted and we okay so oh yeah sorry <laughs> um, yeah and there's even country songs that I actually just put one up this this week that uh, is about um, how fast time is flying and, and missing out on all these things that are happening right in front of you and there's a song that uh, you think you have time that makes me cry every time I listen to it because it's it's the same idea you just think oh I'll do that tomorrow I'll do that tomorrow I'll spend the time I'll, I'll do the important things tomorrow mm -hmm. and suddenly tomorrow doesn't come yet so yeah well, we also just had, um, I'm not sure if you saw the broadcast, but we had the youngest person ever um, to address our parliament. Oh, I haven't watched that. It was no. yesterday yeah. or the day before. I can't remember the exact day. Um, but oh, Malala, Malala. Yeah. was here. And uh, I felt like her speech was very much like this. Um, it was very inspiring. You don't have to be, you know an old person, so to speak, <laughs> to make a difference. Young people can be leaders too. You need to seize the day. And of course, she's someone that has has experienced that. Do you think our youth today can really connect with, like even um, Werner and Mari Lohr, they were young people young, yeah. and they were going through these things. Um, and I'm not saying our young people don't go through things that, that they need to, you know, reconcile as well. But, um, do they really understand what it's like, what someone like Malala went through? No, I don't think so. How can we help them with that? Or can, or should we? Well, they think that, yeah. Well, they think that their life right now is like so horrible, but really they have no idea. Um, mm -hmm. We have no idea what someone like her has gone through. Um, I think with social media, maybe they're a little more aware than maybe we were back then mm -hmm. when we were their age? I think they're aware of it, but 
like I didn't grow up ever having to deal with anything like that. Mm-hmm. So it's hard for me to relate to someone who has come from a war torn mm-hmm. country. I have empathy for them for sure. Sympathy probably more than empathy because it's hard for me to understand what it what they went through. I had a pretty good life. So yeah. Just looking at these guys are discussing which uh, the death and life of Superman perhaps is, oh. the, is the book suggestion there. Death and Life of Superman. I'm all for that. I think that would be great. <laughs> great suggestion. <laughs> what was your question for tonight? You had a question. I've asked it. Oh, yeah, right. I have a couple, but um, um, I guess I was also wondering, the radio plays a really important role, and you mentioned mm-hmm. social media. Um, so, of course, uh, Hitler bans radio. He wants to control the media, which is very interesting because, of course, we have a leader that is in one of our neighboring countries <laughs> um, <laughs> who very much wants to control, wants to the, control media. the media mm-hmm. and if the media says anything against him he doesn't want to do that and so it's very interesting he's been compared to Hitler you know whether you think that that's true or not um, it's really irrelevant but back then um, of course radios were were banned and that's how they found a lot of these people so Werner was this whiz he could find someone broadcasting something and the way that they communicated with each other was through these radio broadcasts with secret hidden codes and um, there was a lot of moments I felt that the way that they could almost get through these terrible things that were happening in the war because they happened to be able to steal away and listen to their radio and it was just something as simple as music playing Mm -hmm. Um, someone was playing the violin and you felt that connection so I was thinking about that and its impact on the war and the internet and its impact on and social media and its impact on all of the things that we're going through and you mentioned a little bit about you know people feeling more connected to the world. Do we feel more connected? Are we more connected? Is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? What do you guys think? What do you think? What do you guys think? Uh, well, it's actually, it was really interesting that Germany was actually at the forefront of a lot of uh, technology because of the war. So would some of that stuff have advanced as much as it did mm-hmm. uh, if it hadn't been for the war? Uh, they were doing a whole bunch of things and I think even even radios but the, what was happening with radio and TV like wasn't the the broadcast of the Olympics wasn't that the first television worldwide broadcast of something well I mean just look at us I mean we're broadcasting something that would traditionally we would have never been able to come and talk to you guys and have an interactive broadcast even if we did have, you know, the wonderful people at Olds Community TV running a station that was just, you know, a bricks and mortar station and not an online, you know, portal to the world, um, and we wouldn't have been able to interact with people. We would have just been able to do our little script and sit here yeah. and say, well, <laughs> what do you think about that? I don't know. What do you think about that? Um, which is kind of what we're doing right now, but you know, um, there is that potential. Um, so yeah, I think op- that being open to the world and whatnot has been really a great thing for our society. Or has it been a great thing? <laughs> Definitely it's made the world a smaller place, right? It took how long to send messages? Mm-hmm. They did Morse code, Morse code before that and pigeons and stuff before that. and. Oh. So, so I think war does a lot for enhancing technology and pushing it forward because of the race that they want to have to get in front of the, their enemies, right? And um, I don't know if I was really even... Do you think people that. are more depressed nowadays because there's like... You're connected but not connected. You're connected to this, this world and it seems like all you get is this bad news of crap that's happening all over the world. Or do you think there's enough cat videos out there <laughs> that people are able to... Or geese videos, apparently. Geese being saved videos. <laughs> um, I think it's easy to think we are connected when we're really not. 
I, d I think you don't have to be face to face with the person to connect. I've met a lot of really great people online and I've never met them face to face, but I feel connected to them. Um, but definitely it's easy to, to always be on and I think that's, that's a big thing about the internet and your devices and, and stuff is there's no downtime, there's no getting away from it. You have to make yourself get away from it and a lot of people don't do that and I think that's actually what causes a lot of problems. I know it does for me and my family, um, being constantly connected and never disconnecting. Mm -hmm. Getting back to... Well, and TV, TV and content mm -hmm. and entertainment certainly has changed over the last several years when you look at something like YouTube and and the fact that people can just go online and sit and and basically find anything they want on there to, to yeah. if they want to watch the news they can watch the mm -hmm. news but if they would rather watch cat videos or dog videos then sometimes you're just feeling you know I did anyone here has has April had her her baby yet <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I don't April have here. your baby oh. anyway um, do we have some questions? I think they're still talking about which book. You guys which keep book. discussing which book. <laughs> we will we'll definitely Goose. look at that. Oh, oh, here. Is the human brain really capable of dealing with so much complexity? Oh. Yeah. Multitasking is BS. I agree. My brain isn't capable of dealing with so much complexity. <laughs> <laughs> I know this really great guy, his name is John Paul, mm -hmm. and his brain might be perfectly capable <laughs> of uh, going through that much complexity. I don't know. I think we, I think it, I think we're capable. I don't think we've evolved that far yet. Um, we're distracted easily. And are we, are we devolving? Oh, are we devolving? What do you think? <laughs> well, I don't think so. I think in general we are still maybe not as many people as should be. There are studies. There's a lot of wasted brain space, but there was a lot of wasted brain brain space back in the day too that people well, didn't live up to the potential. And then right? there's the people could still be wasting just as much time as they always have. They're yeah. just doing it with other things. It's interesting yeah. because I know um, I've talked to other people. I love geeky things, I love video games, I love all of that and sometimes I will spend a whole day just playing video games. Um, sometimes I'll sit and read a book, whatever, but some people will look at you when you say you play video games like, oh, that's kind of a waste of time, mm -hmm. like, oh, you really, yeah. you play video yeah. games? Did, didn't peg you for a video game person, you're kind of intelligent, you know? And <laughs> Sometimes you just want to play Minecraft and you know what, Minecraft is super interactive. Um, you can play with people, your brain is, is actually doing something while you're playing a video game, uh, you're problem solving, you're doing all these things rather than just sitting on the TV. So, you know, I think uh, these types of entertainment things have really, in some ways, enhanced. It'll be interesting to see what we look like in 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, our brains Which, are, heads are getting bigger. Actually, speaking of what we might look like in 20 years, I think it's wrapping up. We're about at our oh. we're out of time. Oh so before we do that, we have a couple things. Um, first, thank you to uh, Dean Owen from Olds Community TV, who does our filming for us. He is wonderful, showing up here all the thank time, and he much. does all the fancy graphics for us <laughs> and um, really makes this easy for us. So thank you. Um, also, we have a draw that we do every month. So all you have to do to enter this draw is like and share our next event, which uh, it is actually already up, I think, on the Pandora's Books Facebook page. Um, but you just have to go to events, like and share, and then you're automatically entered. Um, and who is our lucky winner this time? Zach Webster. Ooh, yay, Zach. Uh, so Zach wins a $10 gift certificate from Pandora's Books and Tea. You can stop in any time and pick that up. And next month, this book is, as I said, super exciting to me. Uh, it is going to be a movie coming out shortly. I didn't know that when I finished reading it and reading it, and I was so obsessed that I went on and I was like looking at everything, and I found out it was going to be a movie, and that Emma Watson was going to be in it, and Tom Hanks was going to be in it, and I was like, I'm just mind blown. Anyway, this book is called The Circle. It is basically about a 
online company called The Circle, which for all intents and purposes is essentially Google. Um, I was going to go <coughs> Google. <coughs> a little quieter. Um, it is a very interesting discussion about transparency, Big Brother, uh, social media, the internet, basically online presence, shopping, and what that all means. And ultimately, at the end of this book, you won't know whose side you're on. I can guarantee you that. So like this is a really great book, and I hope you all read it or get a chance to read it at some point. If you don't read it before next broadcast, that's okay. I hope you will join us anyways. Mm -hmm. So as always, that is the second Thursday of the month at 7 o'clock here on the Pandora's Books Facebook page. So all right. thank you very much, guys, and have a great night. Yes. Ciao. See ya. Thank you.